Friday lunch, Friday lunch Maybe through the weekend you didn't get punched World's gone crazy but I got a hunch We'll all feel better after Friday lunch Welcome to Friday Lunch. My name is Corby Linker. I'm with my buddy Danny Schmidt here. Hello. Danny's a longtime friend and folk singer. I'm going to say that you're originally from Austin, Texas, because that's what I think of you as. That's what I think of me as, too. Okay, cool. That makes two of us. I was born there. That's a, as original there as it gets. Nice. That One is of 12 people who was born in Austin, Texas. It's the, you're the Two Austin years. version of Nashville. Yeah, exactly. The same deal. Yeah. Danny is an exemplary singer-songwriter. He does both things really well at a high level and he's written many songs that mean a lot to a lot of people so i'm really glad to have him in the studio how are you doing man thank you i'm delighted to be here Good. i'm glad we're neighbors now i know that, that makes me happy that's one one life upgrade for me totally and he's nash we're gonna get into a song pretty quick yeah but um i just want to touch on first of all like well why'd you move to nashville that's an easy one well it's funny i mean i was making a bit of a joke about being neighbors now but that's Really, what it came down to for moving here is Austin's grown very big, and our friends are all scattered all over town. Traffic's gotten really bad, and it got really hard to see our friends. And um, besides the pocket of friends we had in Austin, kind of our national touring songwriter uh, tribe has slowly coalesced into East Nashville, mm -hmm. and they're all in the same neighborhood here. And so we were like, if we want to see our friends more, yeah, Let's why, go why, are. why do you think that is? Because I, th and I'll preface that by saying I think that like what I do, what you do, what our tribe does, what we're talking about, is more of a Tex, is a more of an Austin thing, a hill country folk thing, yeah, a Guy Clark derivative, Towns Van Zant thing than East Nashville or Nashville. So why why did we all move here? Why are we moving here? Good question. I think there's a lot of different reasons for different people. There's a lot more production here, so people who have a foot in in producing or engineering or doing session stuff, there's a lot more of that work here. There's a lot more of the publishing work here, the sort of industry side of the writing part. Um, and then I just practical. It's cheap. It was cheaper mm -hmm. than Austin for the, for a very long time, and it was just more affordable, and you could put more of your energy doing the stuff you love doing and less of the stuff you had to do to pay the bills which yeah. is what austin was like originally which is what, <laughs> why people gathered there at the time. sure and uh and also maybe there's an argument to be made for if you're touring a lot it's a little easier to get to some spots that is true definitely and we didn't even think about that when we moved here but we have found that to be true if you surprise, make an eight surprise. hour radius around nashville compared to an eight hour radius around austin it's kind of phenomenal you you know totally gets, you get you all the way to florida get you all the way to chicago um huge uh, it's changed my understanding of the geography of the united states <laughs> yeah well i think that's actually part of the reason why nashville became music city because yeah. traditionally you know country music was a touring industry it is again now but um, that was a big reason because you can get to like 20 major markets yeah. in, inside of eight hours or something. I can't remember the exact numbers. <laughs> I never can. Um, but uh, let's just jump into a song, man. What do yeah, you, what do you think do you're going to play? <laughs> Good question. I don't know. <laughs> we haven't talked about that. I was going to get your, because uh, I know all of them, yeah. you know, which actually I, I say that, but that's not even true. Yeah, um, I have to dust them. them. <laughs> yeah. I could at least dust off point. all of them. Um, so yeah, it depends what you want. You want to hear some older stuff, some newer stuff. It, well, Political um, stuff, personal stuff, whatever. Let's just find out together. Let's find out together. Okay. Don't look back, they're right behind you. Sent to find you, bring you home. Words are hooks and hearts and minds You can't close your eyes and hide And just hope they'll go away Careful that the words don't choose you Tell your tongue Step where you do When the wolves of doubt come growling Confusion sets your mind to howling Your mouth just runs away and Don't you cry, you're only human all consumed and all too proud now's the time while wounds are open to go 
going, man, the bones you've broken and the messes that you've made. Letters have a way of spilling Ink stains from a cloud of feelings Kneel before the fount of reason Say a prayer for one clear season While the goddess screams amen I'm going to assume that too. I Thanks hope for that. <laughs> Thanks for giving me the benefit of the doubt. Um, well, dude, let's uh, let's go let's go into the origin story, man. Uh, like, what? <laughs> Why did you get into this? What's the? Because I, I like you're famous to a lot of people, but you're also you're famous to me <laughs> because I knew of you for ten years before we ever met. That's funny. And um, back in the days of there was a, like a radio. Um, like in early days of online radio, internet radio it was like based in Alaska. Whole Wheat Radio. Whole Wheat Radio. You were such a favorite on that, and I that, I discovered so many artists through that. You know, Jim. Network. Jim and Esther founded Whole Wheat Radio, and Jim just passed away last month. Oh, we just went up to, to Col Columbus to to do a memorial for him. Yeah, he, it, Whole Wheat was an amazing, so far ahead of its time online streaming radio venture that had a whole community, yeah. online community that built up around, around the it. world. And really. still like a legit community that knows each other and are close to each other and kind of grew out of just listening to music together. It was very interesting. Yeah, and you were like a, a, a favorite of Whole Wheat. And um, so I want to know, why did you start doing this? Um, good question. It's like, I, I mean, whatever you want to say. I mean, yeah. you know, it's just like what... Like, no, because I didn't do it with much intention. Play? Was No, no. Yeah. My dad was an engineering professor. Uh, my mom stayed home mom until we were out of the house and went back to nursing school. And um, I always loved music. Grew up in Austin. Our favorite thing to do as teenagers was go out to shows. Um, amazing local scene there. Um, I always loved music. I listened to it constantly. Started to fall in love with the singer-songwriters, with the writers. Because I, I always liked writing as well. And, mm -hmm. and literature, and uh, all of a sudden those worlds meshed, and I had an appreciation for the songwriters who really had a focus on their poetry and stuff like that, and never even gave a thought to doing it myself. Um, mm -hmm. I taught myself guitar so I could try to learn some of those songs that I loved and play along with them and stuff, and it wasn't until I fell in love with a girl um, who made me work for it pretty hard, and. Um, songs a couple songs just popped out of me uh, in yeah. the style of the stuff i was listening to yeah. you know um as it does and um nothing is quite so rewarding <laughs> for the endorphins in your brain as like the uh you, you play a song you wrote for someone who's special 
to you and they react positively and you're yeah. like, ding, 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 totally. ding, ding. I want to do that it's again. A, yeah, that's a clue. Um, <laughs> and like I, at the time I was living communally on a farm and we were very close. It was like an extended family situation. And we did a lot of um, culture sharing stuff, little uh, coffee houses through the summer where we'd all gather and people would play different songs. That, you know, I'm going to play a Dylan song. Mm -hmm. The kids are going to write us a skit. Somebody writes poetry. Mm -hmm. And so that was my first outlet for sharing the stuff that I had written besides just with my girlfriend. And again, it was like... That um, on, the commu on the commune yeah, right there? Wow. Yeah. yeah. Did, and I was, I was a nervous wreck. Like, literally, uh -huh. if, I, if I knew on Friday I was going to sing a song for them, I wouldn't eat past Wednesday because <laughs> I was sick to my stomach with yeah. the idea. And that was as close, as supportive an environment as it possibly could be. Otherwise, I wouldn't even have ventured that far mm -hmm. out. Um, but they were incredibly supportive and kind of patted me on the bottom to go out beyond the community and, and share the songs. And that was the first time it occurred to me it, that that was a thing I could do. Um, How old were you when that was going Like on? 24. Uh -huh. uh, and that was like in Texas also? That was um, two different communities. Um, I lived in the Ozarks, uh, the first community, and met this girl who lived in Virginia at a different community mm -hmm. and moved to Virginia for five years. I forgot so, that you were such a hippie. Yeah. 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 <laughs> More of a um, sort of a... I don't know what the word is because they weren't they weren't exactly hippie communes. Yeah. It was a little bit more um, in the spirit of um, utopian, like sort of academics from the like, 19th century, yeah. trying to build some models to see if they could work and kind of report back to the world what did work and didn't. There was certainly a, a big hippie contingency there, sure. but also and that's what I mean by it's just that spirit. Oh of, yeah, like let's make a utopian. Yeah, let's have a let's have us a utopian experience. Yeah. I've thought a lot about those days in the last few years mm -hmm. as the bigger world's gotten quite divided and divisive mm -hmm. and thinking. Because one of the downsides of, of living communally like that is it's a lovely little bubble, but you're very aware of um, that it's very insular. A world within a world. Yeah. yeah. And, um, but all of a sudden, I, the, in, in an insular world didn't sound so bad <laughs> for a while. Um, yeah. Um, do you have a song that kind of came out of that time that you could maybe play? Sure. Yeah. I mean, I could play the song I wrote for her. Yeah, that's great. Um, that's the first song. If that's it, uh, I mean, if you feel like sh sure sharing it, you know, it's my first song, so it's is it's exactly how good or not you would expect a first song to be. Love but, it. Uh, Let's do it. It's a starting point. Okay. Um, yeah. This is this one's the the first song I ever wrote. Um, it's called the Cliff Song. Um, because at this point I had not yet moved to Virginia to be with the girl that I was madly in love with. I was trying to talk my way there and it was kind of a complicated situation and we, we kind of were writing these big long letters back and forth to each other and she wrote me this one with this big long extended metaphor about how it seemed like my, my proposition to move to Virginia was like this uh, take, taking a path right along the edge of a very precarious cliff. And so um, this was my letter back to her, basically called the Cliff Song. to make love to both parts at once but a part of me knew that I never could and Cosmos says we're too close to the edge I can't help but be scared when she's scared but she also agrees it's a beautiful scene life's valley through the mist and the fears and life Life. Yes, it sure looks alive from here. I showed her her name engraved on my heart. She said there must be some mistake. 
And I tried to invite myself into her room But there were things that she was scared I would break But Cosmoses were too close to the edge I can't help but be scared when she's scared But she also agrees it's a beautiful scene Life's valley through the mist and the fear and life, oh life, yes it sure looks alive from here. We sang our song softly together, she swayed to the guitar I'd strum. But she was scared that her life might go dancing away If three hearts all started to drum And Cosmoses were too close to the edge I can't help but be scared when she's scared But she also agrees it's a beautiful scene Life's valley through the mist and the fear and life, oh life, yes it sure looks alive from here. Well, fear ain't nothing, it's falling that's real, and to let the fear rule you is a shame. Because dreams and memories can warm me at night And hugging pillows just ain't the same But Cosmoses were too close to the edge I can't help but be scared when she's scared But she also agrees it's a beautiful scene Life's valley through the mist and the fear and life, oh life, yes it sure looks alive from here, yes it sure looks alive from here. This is fun man, I love uh, the hang and the talk and, and getting to hear you play up close and personal. Um, you're, you know, as people can see now that not one of the things I love about our tribe, let's say, uh, is that it, it, it really is like a true singer songwriter racket that we're pursuing and that you have to be able to, you know, cr craft a song that's meaningful. And, you know, with us largely, or there's some element and maybe a large element of like personal meaning to that. But then that all aside, there's like this, you know, pursuit of musical, at least proficiency, you know, and part of the joy for me always in like seeing somebody share a song that they wrote is um, it's such a treat when they're good musicians also mm -hmm. and they can really play and, you know, you can really play. Thanks. So, um, <clears throat> and now that we've gone way back to the very beginning, it doesn't go more beginning than the first song ever. Uh, we could talk about um, let's let's just be a little philosophical for a second. Um, and I'm not like a person that worries about AI like some people do, but I am a person that thinks about like the future of um, live folk music and next generations being uh, carrying on this tradition that I love so much. Um, do you have anything? Do you think about this ever? Do you? Do you yeah, not I think about it all the time. Yeah, I've been. I was like a long time sci-fi reader, and eventually stopped reading sci-fi and started just reading blogs because we were kind of reality had caught up with all this, the sci-fi of my youth. <laughs> right. And so, I, yeah, I've been very interested in AI and excited about it, alarmed by it. I have a six-year-old daughter now, and I would probably still be somewhat alarmed if I didn't have a little girl. More alarmed with the uncertainty of kind of knowing how to help her grow in a way that's going to assure she has a role in whatever kind of human hum, humanity is coming. Yeah. Um, Feels pretty uncertain. You know, if I hazard a uh, an unqualified guess, one of the things that I think is is um, cachet now, and it's only going to get more uh, dear, 
going forward is um, the the preciousness of an authentic experience. Yeah. And um, because there's everything is so available now, and consequently nothing has any meaning. And that's part of I think why people are so depressed with their phones. And um, you can you can just like what's a it's such a powerful device it can take you anywhere in the world, but also you work for nothing in that. And um, I think that you know increasingly like hard won uh, pursuits are going to be rewarded. And what I mean by that is that like people are going to want to see. Um, humans do something that can't be done on a screen. And I think that like, I don't know what the music business holds for the future really, but I do, th I, and I might be naive, but I do think that like the house concert experience and like this kind of ground roots, like community of people hosting events in a room live, I think is not only going to never disappear, but I think it's going to get more and more valuable. Um, and I would almost say, like, if I have any sort of cause that, like, in my life, I, I, it is to, like, share this awareness that this is a possibility, not only for musicians, but for, like, humans. Yeah. Like, in, uh, you, I know you've played a million house concerts. Um, and, you know, I have, too. And yeah. so I know uh, from personal experience, like, what works, what doesn't work, who, like, how to do it, both, like, from a host and, yeah. like, as a performer. And like when it's done right, it's God, I've had so many like deeply meaningful experiences, yeah. you know, and, and, and shared those experiences. Like with, uh, we all had that experience yeah. together and God, like, you can, you know, that'll take you a long way. Yeah, totally. And the best and worst things about house concerts is just how human and immediate and intimate <laughs> yeah, totally. it is. Um, it can make for the, the most awkward of house concert situations. And yeah. um, like we just feel extremely exposed right there in front of all the yeah. People no and, mic. And then some people. of the most magical, like you really connected on a human level with somebody uh, in a meaningful way. Um, and I agree. I think those kind of live performances are going to just have more and more cachet, mm -hmm. I think, as people um, want to have kind of a genuine stamped by human kind of experience. As far as the creation of the work, I think it's going to start being more and more of a hybrid creation. I think that... The human's role is going to be a little bit more of a curator and yeah. and how to hold your robot's hand, yeah, best to work together to to make something. Um, in what sense? Do, what in what sense for folk music? Because I can see it easily in many other genres, but um, for the writing, you mean? Yeah, I was thinking for writing mm -hmm. and eventually probably for production too, but mm -hmm. um, maybe quicker for in that world. I'm not sure. I haven't really thought about that world as much as the writing world, but I. I don't think we're going to be too far away from uh, kind of crossing the uncanny valley with the writing itself. You know, whether that's five years from now, 15 years from now, we're going to cross that line where you know, you're not going to be, you know, us as um, experienced uh, curators of songs, we could probably look at two songs now and tell if one... Well, I don't know if we could tell if it was created by a machine. We could tell if one wasn't magical, mm -hmm. magically human or not. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I don't think there's going to come a time in the future where we're, we're not going to be able to make that distinction. I don't think. Do you think um, does that make you sad or, or um, bad or indifferent? You know what makes me sad about the whole thing? Um, people keep talking about the AI is getting smarter and smarter and smarter and they haven't gotten to our level of intelligence yet. And I think when the realization of when they start making things that's as good as what we do, we're still not going to think they're that smart. What we're going to do is realize that everything we think is so smart about humans are really just artifacts of the sort of neural network operating the way ours works, which mm -hmm. isn't that different from what they're creating. And I think intelligence is going to seem kind of a bit trivialized mm. artifact that just emerges from, as it kind of emerged from the large language models, like it kind of shocked the people creating those things, just how well it responded. Mm -hmm. that, yeah, um, that was my It was very well. kind of emergent. Yeah. Um, and I think we're going to realize that's what our intelligence kind of is. Yeah. Um, so that part makes me sad. That, no, <laughs> I think. We're kind of dumb. I think that like it makes me sad, and I also I just don't maybe I've never had a super high opinion about of our. Intelligence. I mean I, that's not true. It's like who doesn't get inspired by like 
putting men on the moon, even though it was a conspiracy in the thing. <laughs> um, but uh, I guess, you know, it's like, I think that um, when I look at like mid journey images and stuff, it's, it's kind of like, wow, that's uh, AI made that. That's amazing. And it's like, means nothing to me. You know, it's like, I've ne- and I, it's probably because I have this like naive relationship to art in that, like I, it's all about meaning for me, like how, to, and, and feeling. And, and it's like right. when I, like I love, and I can get, and do get emotional and cry at sports performances regularly just yeah. to like see a human just like rise up and just do something t- totally amazing. That's why I love tennis uh, and basketball and all of them. Yeah. Um, and it's the same thing when I see somebody up there like sa- sharing a song that's like, there's just something about it, you know, that's like weird and magical. And, and it would, and like, I hear the record and I'm like, cool, it's just a song on a record. But like being there in that moment, in that room, that's like something that's not about intelligence or machinery. It's about that ancient, like staring into a campfire, like yeah. hearing the, the tribal elder tell you the, the story of your family. Right. I think sometimes about, I don't know if you've had these experiences. I've had an experience both ways, actually, where um, a song on paper... I don't think is that great a song. Yeah. But when the person that wrote it, it comes out in their voice. There's just something so authentic about it that, like, that person with that song is great. Yeah. And alternatively, I've heard people put out a song of their own that was kind of like, eh, that's okay. And then I've heard another artist come and put their voice to it yeah. and go like, oh, I yeah. get it. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. And so when I start thinking about just the writing part of it. So you look at that mid journey picture and it's missing the human triumph in it. But that's but you saw it made. What if what if a person handed that to you and look at this new uh, screen print thing I made. Yeah. And you get to take out the part where you know who or who did or didn't create it. That's kind of like doing a cover. You know, in a way, it's like uh-huh. s- s- a new voice lending their own meaning to a thing that someone else wrote and with the caveat that all the generative stuff is baby, are babies right now. Yeah. You know, trying to imagine them 10 years from now where it's that it's much better. Crazy. And could it spit out a song that when the right voice took that piece of paper and lent their humanity to it, would it create the same kind of magic, emotional stir? That, and I don't you know, know the answer either. I We're both that, speculating. Yeah, yeah, no, totally. I think that the answer is like for a very large number of people, yes. <laughs> you know, yeah. I think that I have, you know, like most people don't care about music in the same way that I do. Yeah. Where I'm like, yeah, well, did you play it yourself? You know, like from when a little kid to me, I just assumed that anybody that was on a record, they wrote their song. Yeah. I just that that was the same thing, and I still have that relationship to it. And and so like most people don't care about that at all. They're right. like doctors or housewives or whatever and uh or female attorneys uh (laughs) and uh i the idea that um you know like boy bands and uh k-pop and um you know like in a lot of country songs it's not about who who cares how it was made or you know if it was auto-tuned to the yeah nth degree it's, right. It's like, does it's it, what, it's, what experience did you have when you heard it? Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. So, as, you know, I don't know. It's like if I was a country songwriter, I would be more worried than as, that I'm a weird folk musician. Sure. They're very formulaic. They work, they're working off a formula, which is that's going to be the AI easiest specialty. and quickest thing for yeah. them to figure out. Yeah. Um, so maybe we're going to be OK. Who knows? Yeah. One way or another. We'll still be here in 100 years or not. Or plugged into some yeah, machine. Just like little, fed, little, little sacks. Fed electrolytes little jelly. Through, through a string and yeah. As long as it's comfortable. I like it, you know. <laughs> Can you turn it up a little bit? It's a little cold. Uh, yeah, it's, it's those time frames that I start to worry about because then I just think of my daughter. Yeah, and I'm no, like, sure. And I'm like, what have I brought her into and – how can I possibly prepare her for this when I can't even really quite imagine what it is that's yeah. coming? Much less think then how would you prepare for someone for that if you knew it was coming? I, I mean, a sentiment that. that's probably been felt by every single generation yeah, since the beginning right, of time for thousands of years. Yeah, yeah. Um, but it doesn't good be point. happening very quickly. Yeah, <laughs> but it probably always felt like it was happening quickly. Yeah, you know, right. I think that is one of the differences. It's like it used to be generate like maybe a generational change, not like a this happened in two years yeah. kind of thing. Um, well, dude, I don't want to take any more of your time, and I know that we both got things to do. Um, maybe you can glad we had this opportunity song. to chat, dude. I love this. I, I mean, excuse, I really do it for a long time. Any excuse for it? Yeah. Uh, 
Well, what would you like to send us home with? Or um, send us on with? Another song. We'll figure it out. We'll talk. Okay. I can't wait to find out. Me too. <laughs> and um, we have a big summer full of guests coming up. Um, Liz Longley. Uh, another neighbor. Another neighbor. Another uh, talented neighbor. Leah Blevins, another talented neighbor. Um, some dudes. I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> uh and um, so it's going to be really fun. And um, thank you guys for tuning in. Like and subscribe if this means anything to you. And Danny Schmidt, thank you so much for being here. Hey, it's my pleasure. It's good First to time I've ever ha- shook a man's hand on <laughs> Friday lunch. See you guys. This one's just called A, a Prayer for the Sane. And it's um, kind of a distillation of my ruminations mm-hmm. about the, the state of divide in, in our country and in the world right now. like hell to raise the phoenix tear the world in two the truth from the half the truth the lies and the bad disguises from the facts and Nobel prizes yeah good lands of good neighbors and good friends but we used to fight like dancers one call with different answers these were open lands and strangers were our future friends but fences make for consequences we're prisoners of our own defenses Now our heart's been broken We lost our way but found it stolen Hidden in a storm of nothing A hurricane of newsmen blushing Now our eyes are bleeding Tears of the loss of reason A pool of our own objections We're honest men with no reflections yeah. Here's the choice, my sister Gentle warrior, fierce resister Fill the sky like blackbirds Or sit and watch the world spin backwards Here's the choice, my brother Old soldier, different drummer March hard to break the borders Or stand guard in the old world orders Here's the choice, my child Raise your hands and reconcile While the king kneels down before us It's time for you to rise in chorus It's time to set our anger free It's time for facts to shade beliefs It's time to name the new north star It's time for flames to skewer the dark It's time to shake the voting booth It's time for us to scream The truth Now it's time, my friends It's time to make us whole again Just as the world revolves Let's get these broken days resolved
Hey, if you liked that video, do me a favor, like and subscribe. And why not watch this one? <laughs> uh, did I do that good? Did I do that right?